guys, so we're gonna go work out with Andrew this morning. Um, I just did my fasted cardio, and I'm about to leave. I have my aminos and my C4 ready to go. I drink my C4 when I get there, we're working out at seven today. We're doing legs, quads, um, and I'm really excited, so it'll be really fun. Andrew's my coach. We're gonna, I hope we're gonna film a little bit. I don't actually know, um, so we'll find out when we get there, but I'm excited. I'm excited for my quads to really hurt really bad, and I haven't seen Andrew in like three weeks, so it'll be a really fun time. Okay guys, so this is a little bit different um, version of a leg press. So I had Andrew film it for you, so you can kind of hear yeah. us talking a little bit. They were burning really bad. I had actually never done this before. Good. But this is a leg press, but it's more of a quad press. So it, the sure whole focus is on the quads. So um, the glute and the hamstrings are not really activated at all in this movement. So you want to put your feet on it really narrow so that your heels are hanging off and you're pressing with your toes and you're activating the quads. You want to come right. down until you feel that tightness in the quad and then and push it back up but you'll hear Andrew say don't lock it out so you kind of go halfway up and then back down and this will burn out so quickly this is such a great quad movement I absolutely am in love with this and can't wait to do it again although it hurt really really bad the second one that I never done before I had him uh, film I called quad falls but I don't actually know what they are called that's what I like to call them so these um, you want to have a bar that's a little less than shoulder um, height and you want to put your hands really narrow on it like almost like your fists are going to be touching and you don't want to put much weight in your hands you want all the weight to be focused in your toes and quads in over, your, sure your quads so you're going to fall forward don't fall back like in a squat you want to fall forward and then you want to come up slowly and then squeeze your hips at the top um, a little bit but these were burning so bad they do a really good job I'm actually really really in love with this I've got a little bit of a quad injury so the second set we did of these I couldn't go down quite as far but we filmed the first set so that you guys could see exactly how to do it and you can see how my quads are working here um, it really starts to burn and it we superseded it with the quad leg presses so it worked out really well Okay, so then I wanted to show you guys a little bit of the foam rolling that I do on my leg days. So the first one really targets the hamstrings and the glutes. Um, my glutes and my hamstrings were already really sore, and I wanted to make sure that I rolled them out. Hannah and I had done a glute hamstring day a couple days prior to this, and so I was still a little bit sore, which was why Coach and I did a quad focus day. Um, and so I'm just rolling out my hamstrings. So I kind of start with both my legs on it, and I kind of loosen them up a little bit from my knee to my glutes, and then I put one leg on it, and that puts a little bit more weight on my leg, but but you can control how much weight is on your leg, so how deep you're getting into the foam rolling by putting the other leg on the floor as an anchor. So um, once I do that, I kind of foam roll, same way, um, glute to knee. So you're getting all the hamstring and all of the glute muscle. And I do that a few times, and then I switch to my side to get kind of the side of my hamstring and my quad just to get another area of my leg here. And the reason why I like to foam roll, you guys, foam rolling is actually really important just as stretching is to keep your muscles long and lean and keep you flexible while you're still building lean muscles. So you, if you don't ever stretch or you don't do any foam rolling, um, your muscles can like shrink up and they won't be like that long lean look. So foam rolling is so good, especially on leg days. I always make sure to foam roll. And I usually do on back days as well because I do have a chronic back injury. I haven't had any problems in months, but I just do it as preventative and this helps get all that lactic acid out of your muscles. The next way I just like to foam roll my quads a little bit so I kind of lay on it with both my legs placed on it and foam roll completely up my quad and you can see my toes are pointing down towards the floor. I wanted to show you a couple different versions of this so how I start is I foam roll with my toes pointing the floor. Just foam roll on my quads, really warm them up, get that lactic acid moving around that I built up and get those muscles stretching out a little bit and then now I have my feet pointed out so my toes are pointing out out, like I was doing a kind of a sumo squat and I separated my legs a little bit to get um, a different portion of that quad muscle. So it's kind of like I've shown you with leg presses before. I like to do them with my toes pointing normal out and in. It targets different areas of the quad. You do the same thing when you want to foam roll. You're going to be targeting different areas of the quad and foam rolling out different muscles. So um, you want to make sure that you're hitting all of the quads. So that's why I do that. And I just thought I would show you a back view of when I foam roll the outside of my quad there. Then I'm just going to work on my calves. I do the exact same thing with my calves as I did on my quads. So calves, toes pointing up, toes pointing out, toes pointing in. And you're going to get different sections of that. And um, the calf <laughs> foam rolling feels so good. It doesn't hurt. Sometimes with my hammies and my glutes when they get sore, it kind of hurts to foam roll. But with my calves, it always feels really good. The last thing is really targeting my hips. I'm so tight in here and so it hurts really bad to foam roll. But it's really, really good for you. You guys, I totally recommend foam rolling. It's one of the best things you can do after you work out. So try out these um, 
leg foam rolling exercises and let me know how they work out. Okay, so I just got back from my lift with Andrew. You saw my foam rolling and a little bit of my lift with Andrew. Um, not a ton of it. We didn't take a ton of footage. But now I'm just making some egg whites. I'm not actually sure how many. I think this is probably a little over a cup. And, sorry, this pan, like, slides everywhere. It is clean. It just is really stained from, like, the one time that I cooked chicken or asparagus in here with lemon. It was weird. So, whoa. It slides everywhere because I can't hold it. I'm going to add some cheddar cheese to these and get some coffee and have breakfast. Okay, so I've got my egg whites. Probably about a cup and a half of egg whites, maybe. Um, salt and pepper on those and a little bit of um, cheese. I have my cup for my coffee. I love this mug. It says Buzz. My mom and I found it at Home Goods. She's so cute. It's got a yellow inside. And I put one ice cube in there. I don't know if you guys can see it. And one pack of Truvia. And then I'm going to grab, this is really cool, my coffee pot stops. Probably all of them do that now, but I'm going to grab some coffee. And then my coffee's kind of elaborate, so I grab my Nestle Coffee Mate Creamer. The caramel macchiato is for Tim. And I do just a little dribble in there. Okay, then for my cream of wheat, I add one pack of Truvia, and I top it. I kind of just like usually mix that around in there while it's really warm to kind of dissolve that Truvia. And then I add about like hmm, one to two tablespoons of the Walden Farms pancake syrup. If you guys have never tried this, it's like actually phenomenal and I just kind of drizzle it on the top mix it around a little and that's how I eat my cream of wheat and my egg whites and I'm gonna go drink my coffee and do this and do some work hey guys so I got my body fat done today by my coach um, when I worked out with him and so I thought I would share the results so we do the Jackson 7 caliper method this is really close um, really pretty accurate I was talking to him about today about how accurate it was um, the bod pod testing is like you know 40 or 50 dollars a pop and something I would do but the closest one to me is like an hour away and honestly this is so close in body fat that that's probably something that I'm not ever gonna do unless they bring one a little bit closer um, so he said that this is maybe like 1% off like high or low um, so anyway this involves a bunch of different pinches um, we pinch the chest abdominal thigh tricep subscapular suprailiac and mid axillary and I want to just show you so you have to have your height and um, not your height I'm sorry your weight and your age those are the two things that you need here and then here are my pinches so my chest was 3, my abdominals is 9.5, 11.5 for my thigh, 12.5 for my tricep, subscapular is 6, suprailiac is 10.5, and my mid axillary is five, and then it calculates it based on that. And again, my coach has done this so many times, and I've actually done this a lot too, either on Tim or me or other people, so um, I'm really familiar with this method as well. And my results are up here. So my body fat is 13.41%. My, um, kilo, my um, pounds of body fat, I have 15.28 pounds of fat and 98 pounds, it says 98, right? 98.72 pounds of lean um, mass, which is just muscle. And then it gives you a chart down here. Our essential body fat as women, 10, 10 to 12. Men is 2 to 4. For athletes, 14 to 20. Men, 6 to 13. Fitness is 21 to 24. Men is 14 to 17. Acceptable, 25 to 31. 18, 25 for men. And then obese is over 32 and over 25 for men. So those are my results. I just wanted to share them with you guys. I'm trying to stay right around 13 to 14% body fat in the off season. Honestly, that's where I feel my best generally and it's where I'm most comfortable. So that's kind of my goal and that's my coach's goal for me as well. And we will measure it again next week. This is kind of like measuring it at the beginning of my mini cut. So I'm excited to see what happens next week. I'm hoping it's either um, a little bit lower in the 13s or a little higher 12s. Um, so that's kind of my goal for my little mini cut when I go to the beach. And yeah, I just wanted to update you guys on that. So again, that's what it looks like.